morning, everybody. We have one final garden book that my friend dropped off for us. Remember this big bag of books? This is the last one. So let's take a look at it. See if we think it's a real story, a true story, or a fiction story, one that could not really happen. I'll tell you the title, Philippe in Monet's Garden. Philippe in Monet's Garden. So on the front, you see a frog and a butterfly. Frogs could be near butterflies. I think frogs would probably eat butterflies. Oh, a frog looking at a sign? I don't think so. So I'm thinking this is a make-believe or a fiction story. A uh, frog pointing and talking to each other? No, so it's definitely not a true story. This could not happen. We call that fiction. Let's see what else. Up, oh, a frog talking to sheep and traveling. No, frogs might travel far, but they certainly wouldn't talk to sheep. And a person looking at a frog? Sure, that could happen. I've looked at frogs, maybe you have as well. But overall, the story is definitely fiction. It could not happen. So let's see. Philippe in Monet's Garden. It is written by Lisa Carmack. She is the person who writes the word. We call that the words. We call that person the author. And the other person, the illustrator, is the person who makes the pictures. And that person is named Lisa Chesso. So you notice Lisa and Lisa. The author's name is Lisa and the illustrator's name is Lisa. Okay, we have a lot of rhymes in this book, but we're not going to talk about those today. I just want you to listen to find out who the characters are, what happens in the beginning of the story, in the middle of the story, and at the end. Ooh, it starts out in front of a restaurant and it says, special of the day, frog's legs. This story begins in a frightful way, frog legs, special of the day. Uh-oh. In the city of Paris, as everyone knows, frog legs are eaten except for the toes. They're buttered and baked and sometimes fried the bigger, the better is always the guide. I would not want to eat frog legs. A train ride away in the French countryside lived a frog named Philippe with a marvelous stride. He got his name because of his leap, which was the biggest and grandest, just like his feet. He has big feet. Philippe liked to play in his pond every day, and he tried not to mind when his friends were unkind. People are unkind, they're not really your friends. Tee hee, ha ha, you're a dumb looking frog, they tease the unhappy Philippe. Your thighs are too long, your shape is all wrong, you can't be our friend, you just don't belong. Oh, look at the frog's face. Can you make a face like that? Poor guy. The frog catcher crept with his big trusty net as they bullied Philippe and they made fun of his feet. Oh, there they are laughing. Ah, oh, look at that. Can you pretend to catch a fly? <laughs> oh no, it's not fair, they cried in despair. Philippe and your net is far better, I bet. Big feet or not, I haven't been caught. These legs won't be buttered or baked or fried. But as for you, well, I bid you goodbye. They got caught because they were too busy being mean, and Philippe got away. So now they have the sad face. Leap, leap, Philippe, he heard the sheep bleat as he kept on hopping. There was no time for stopping, and he made his escape from a gruesome fate. There he goes. Can you hop like a frog? Oh, that's hard. Miss Dona would love us doing that. Just when Philippe was all out of leap, he came to a gate of the Monet estate. 
and he read the sign, which suited him fine. He begged Monet's pardon, and he entered the garden. So it says, no frog hunting. Philippe wants to go there. It's safe. He feels much better. Can you make a happy face like Philippe? Oh my, what a size, I can't believe my eyes, exclaimed the painter Monet. What a physique, those legs are magnifique. You're the perfect addition to my garden, not my kitchen. He's very happy to have a frog in his garden. Philippe's grin grew a mile wide. He wouldn't be buttered and baked or fried. This smile became his only expression because Monet's garden made quite an impression. How would he feel then? Excited! You make an excited face, maybe hop around, excited! We've all felt that way. Monet showed him the pond, which he was very fond, where he painted the light between daybreak and night. And as for Philippe, there were bugs of all kinds Green ones and pink ones on which he could dine. Philippe found a home to call his own, and Monet added some green to his painterly scene. Oh, look at him there. Looks calm and happy, relaxed. He doesn't have to worry about getting caught by people or frogs making fun of him. And that is the end. And there is a painting of the real frog pond. Okay, so where did the story take place? That's the setting. Let's see, was it in a school? No. Was it in your backyard or my backyard? No. It was in a frog pond. It went from one frog pond to another. Who were the characters in the story? I'm thinking of four, four main ones. The first, this guy on the front, remember his name? Philippe. And then the other two guys who were not very kind. We didn't learn their names. We can just call them meanie number one and meanie number two. And then at the very end, there was a person, and that was the person who let Philippe stay at his garden. And we can just call that guy the painter. You can see his, he's bending over with his paintbrush. His name is Monet, and he is a painter. Okay, what happened at the beginning? Philippe did not want to stay with those mean frogs, and he did not want to be caught, because if he was caught, somebody would cook him up and eat his frog legs. So what did he do then? What happened in the middle? Remember? He hopped away. He escaped. And at the very end, there he is hopping away. You can see his legs. And at the very, very end, when he felt calm and relaxed and happy as can be and excited for a minute, he got to go to the garden of his dreams where he could have all the bugs he wanted and he had a nice guy to take care of him. I hope you like that book. It's a real garden that people can visit, but it's very, very far away. I will put a picture of the garden up for you to check out. And tomorrow we'll check it out again. And this time we'll talk about the rhymes. I'll see you then.